Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, Stephen's going to be teaching you how to play the Great Fairy Fountain. Now this is a gorgeous composition which comes from the Zelda video game series, and this is actually the third Zelda tune that we've done, so I'm going to link the other two in the description box below if you want to check them out. Now this piece of music, I got a chance to play through it. And first off, I have to say, Stephen did an amazing job on the arrangement. And secondly, I think this arrangement is going to be going to be best suited for the intermediate player because there's something really cool about it. You're going to be learning how to play the music not once, not twice, but three times. The first time through, you're learning it using quarter note rhythm. The second time through, you're using eighth note rhythm. The third time through, 16th note rhythm. So it's really, really cool from a rhythmic perspective because as, it, as you play it once, twice, and a third time, it's like it continually develops and becomes more lush sounding. So very, very cool. Now, I want to go ahead and just take a step back now and let's talk a little bit about this lesson. So in this video, Stephen's going to be teaching you how to play the entire arrangement. But if you want to get the tabs to print off and follow along with, that's going to be available at this link right here. Or you can go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for Great Fairy Fountain. Now also on that page will be the really cool interactive on-screen tab here. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Steven to teach you how to play this and then I'll catch you at the end of the lesson. Hi everyone and welcome to this lesson on Great Fairy Fountain from the Zelda video game series. Now I played a lot of video games in my youth um, but I never actually played the Zelda games and I had no idea they had such a beautiful soundtrack. This piece in particular written by Japanese composer Koji Kondo is just really ethereal sounding, it has these soft repetitive harmonies and it's just absolutely stunning. It's become one of my favourite pieces to play this one. So this arrangement we split into three themes. Um, in the first First section the A melody we're literally just picking out the melody notes um, on the beat with a chord hit on B1. Then in the B melody section we're just going to play that same thing again but add some harmony notes in between the melody notes just to build it up a little bit. And then in the C melody section we're going to play these beautiful continuous 16th note arpeggios uh, behind that same melody line just to really kind of hone your right hand picking skills and just add some depth to that third section. So the C melody section as well, when we get to it, really lends itself to some very expressive playing. So we'll have a look as well at how we can use dynamics and rubato in that section just to add some real emotion to our performance of this beautiful piece. Okay, so make sure you've got your high G ukulele and let's get into this. So if we start with this A section, we're starting things off quite kind of stripped down and simple here. We're just going to be playing the melody notes on the beat with a chord hit on beat one. So the rhythm for all these measures in the A section is just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So nice and simple rhythmically. Our right hand will be pretty unchallenged here as well, quite straightforward for the right hand. The biggest challenge I think in this section will be the left hand. We have got a bit of movement to do up and down the neck and some of these chord changes are a little bit tricky to get them smooth and get them quick. Uh, but as usual, we'll go slow and I'll show you some hints and tips along the way that should help you get these chord changes nice and smooth. So if we look at measures one and two, they should sound like this. So if we go back to measure one, we're starting off on this D minor at 11 chord. What we're going to do is bar across the A, the E and the C string with the first finger, but leaving that G string open. So a three quarter bar across there. Then our pinky is going to take the A string at the seventh fret. We're going to hold that chord and play all four strings on B1. And you could strum those with your thumb, or you could just pick them together with your fingers, or do that kind of arpeggio pick. 
however you want to do it really. This A section, to be honest, you could play the whole thing with your thumb if you were that kind of player. Um, I think when we get into the B and C sections, we'll probably want to be going to more finger picking style, but I'll show you that later. But if you wanted to play this whole section with your thumb, you could do that for this one. But either way, beat one is this chord strum all the way through. However you play that, just make sure that you do pick out that A string at the seventh because that is the melody note that we want to hear. This whole melody just sits on the beat. It's just a quarter note melody all the way through. Every single beat that we play is a melody note. So that keeps it quite simple to get your head round as we're playing this. So beat one, then beat two. We're going to bring the melody down to the A string at the fifth. So all we need to do is take the pinky off, leave that bar on, and that'll open up that A string at the fifth. Pick that note. There we go, on beat two. Then for beat three, the melody comes now onto the G string, so keep that on. Try and let that bar stay held so that A string at the fifth can ring as we put the second finger onto the G string at the sixth, okay? And then we'll pick that with the thumb on beat three. So loop it over so the finger doesn't mute the A string, but try not to kind of let the pressure come off the bar as you bring it over so that A string can ring. So we get this kind of. Okay, if we let that come up, that bar, it'll cut that note. And that's fine, but it just won't sound quite as nice without having that kind of notes ringing over each other thing going on, okay? So try and keep that all held, pressure on, second finger looped over if you can for that bit. And then for the fourth beat, the last note here, we're just gonna play that A string at the fifth again. So we just pick that, it's being held already by the bar. Just pick that on beat four. So that measure one. And I would probably take that second finger off as you play that last note, that A string at the fifth. Um, yeah, probably take that finger off as you do that. So once we've done that, we're going to move into this quite tricky chord transition now. It's probably one of the hardest changes of the whole piece. We're getting straight into it here. We want to turn this bar now into this C add 9 chord, but we want to play it a little bit unconventionally because we need to free up the first finger to play the melody line, which will make more sense in a minute. So normally, we'd probably hold this shape like this with the first, second and fourth fingers, but really we want this first finger free so it's better to play it like that. And that isn't a normal way of holding that chord, so your fingers might not want to get in that position very easily. That might take a bit of practice to use those fingers to play that chord. So this is the C add nine chord. We've got the A string fifth, the E string fourth, sorry, third, and then the C string fourth. And then the G string's open, beat one, we play that whole chord. Okay, but now we want to drop the melody down to the third fret on the A string, but we want this all to carry on ringing, so we'll leave that chord held, but the first finger then will take the A string at the third, pinky will come off, and then we'll pick that single note, A string at the third, on beat two. But again, whilst leaving these two fingers on, we're gonna drop the melody down to the second fret now. So the first finger will just move down a fret and pick that single note on the A string, and then come back up to the third fret so first finger moves back up to where it was to play that note on beat four. So that measure there. And then with measure one. Okay, so one alternative way of playing this C add nine chord that you could try I did this originally when I arranged this, but then it was a bit awkward and a bit uncomfortable, but your fingers might prefer this. What you could do is play this chord for measure two like this, where we have pinky on the A string fifth, first finger takes the E string third, and then the second finger flattens down and does a bar across the C and the G at the fourth fret. So we're playing that chord there. So if we play it like that on beat one, it means we can then take the pinky off, and flatten the first finger into a half bar across the A string and the E string so that we can play that note, A string third. But because we're holding it this way, we've now got the next melody note on the G string now. So the G string fourth, which is the same as the A string second, we can just play it there instead. 
and then come back to that A string at the third, which we're holding there. But it just means that when we're in this position, we're doing a kind of half bar with the first finger across the A and the E, and a half bar across the C and the G strings at the fourth fret, making sure that's looped up so it's not muting that string, which can be a bit awkward to hold that. But it's an alternative to this one. If your fingers preferred that, you know, have a go at both and see which you prefer. Okay, so let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Three and four and... On two measures three and four now, they should sound like this. Okay, so measure three is based on this B diminished chord. And if you've downloaded the tab for this piece, the chord boxes at the top of the tab will only show this B diminished chord. But actually we're gonna be moving the melody line up and down the A string. So although we're based on this chord, our first beat on beat one is actually the A string at the third fret rather than the second. So the pinky will go on there and we'll be holding this shape for beat one. So again, strum that through or pick it, but make sure that A string comes out nice and loud for our melody note. Then we're gonna drop the melody down a fret to the second fret. So this is now this B diminished chord where the third finger's taken the A string at the second. Pinkies come off, we just pick that A string on beat two. Then on beat three, we wanna drop that down to the next fret, to the first fret. So the third finger will come off. The first finger will flatten down. It'll still hold the E string at the first, but it'll now flatten across the A string at the first as well. So a little half bar across there with the first finger. Third finger comes off as we play that at the first fret. And then the final note, beat four here, wanna put that third finger back on. We're coming back up to the second fret now. So the third finger goes back on and pick that on B4. Then if we take that into the next measure, measure four, we want this C major seven chord. So we'll leave that third finger on. We'll take these two fingers off. So the E, the C and the G are open and then just play that full chord. Again, picking out that A string. Then on B2, we just want the A string open. So this finger will come off. Then on beat three, we're gonna play the G string at the first. So loop the first finger over so the base of your hand doesn't mute that ring in A string. Pick that on beat three. And then for the final note of this measure, beat four, we want that A string open again. So we'll just pick that on beat four, but I'd probably take this first finger off as you pick that A string open on beat four. Okay, so there's two measures through once again. It should sound like this. First finger off as we play that one. Okay, so let's try playing those two measures through together now. Three and four and... So measures five and six now should sound like this. So measure five, probably recognize there, is just the same as measure one. So we're just playing that once through again. We won't look at that one again. When we get into measure six, it's basically the same as measure three actually, but moved up a bit further up the neck. So measure six is based on this E diminished chord, but again, we're only showing that chord graph on the tabs, but we're just moving the melody line around that chord. So it's basically the same um, as measure three. When we play the B diminished down here, we're doing that same thing again, but up at the um, sixth fret. Okay, so although we're based on this E diminished chord, we want our first melody note to be the A string at the eighth. So the third, third finger won't be on there to begin with, but the fourth finger will be on the A string eighth. Okay, so we'll play all that on beat one. 
And as I say, probably don't need to go through this one because it is just the same as that measure three, but we'll do it anyway, just so you know what you're doing. So then on beat two, we're going to bring the third finger into play onto the A string seventh, pinky comes off. Pick that on beat two there. And then we'll do this little flattened half bar with the first finger across the sixth fret so we can play the A string at the sixth. Third finger comes off. That's beat three. Then third finger goes back on for beat four. A string seventh. Okay, so once again, those two measures. Okay, so let's have a go at playing those through together now. Three and four and... On to measure seven and eight now, they should sound like this. Okay, so back to measure seven, beat one is this um, first finger bar across the fifth fret A, E and C strings, but leaving the G string open, so a three quarter bar across there, and then stretching the pinky up to the 10th fret on the A string. So that is a little bit of a stretch, should be doable, but it is a bit of a stretch, so maybe practice that one if you're not too comfortable with it. And then on beat one, like before, we're just playing all four strings together, picking out that melody on the A string nice and loud. Okay, and then beat two, bringing the melody down two frets to the eighth fret on the A string, so the pinky can just do that, just bring it down two frets, Leave the bar on though so the other strings can carry on ringing as we play the A string eighth on beat two. Then on beat three, we're dropping that melody down one more fret to the seventh. So the third finger will take that, pinky will come off, pick that on beat three. And then on beat four, back up to the eighth fret. So pinky goes back on A string eighth on beat four. Then into measure 8, we're going to turn this into a G13 chord. So there's not a lot to do here. Um, all we need to do is drop that pinky down to the 7th, take the pressure off the bar, but then you know take the finger off and probably reseat it so that the tip of the finger now is taking C string 5th, and then just add the 3rd finger onto the E string 7th. So we're holding that shape there. Then play all four strings together. Picking out that A string nice and loud once again. Then on beat two, we're going to drop down to the A string fifth. So the second finger will take that A string fifth. Pinky will come off, but again, leaving these two fingers on so it can all carry on ringing. So A string fifth on beat two. Then on beat three, we want to go to the E string eighth. So leave that shape on, add the pinky to the E string eighth. Bit of a stretch that one, that might be a bit tricky, but try and loop that finger over so it doesn't mute the A string, pick that on beat three, and then on beat four, just down to the seventh fret on that string, we're holding it there already with the third finger, so just take the pinky off, pick that E string at the seventh. Okay, so those two measures once again, So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Three and four and... So the B melody section now is essentially just the same as the A section that we've just learnt. It follows the same basic pattern with a full chord hit on beat one, followed by those single note melody picks on the beat. But now we're going to add some harmony notes in between the beats just to start adding some depth to the arrangement and build towards those arpeggios in the C melody section later on. So the rhythm for all eight measures in this section is one and two and three and four. So mostly eighth notes now with that quarter note on B4. So before we get stuck into this section, I just want to talk briefly about those extra harmony notes that we're now adding on the off beats. So we still want the melody that we've just played in the A section to be prominent. That's what we want to hear. We don't want these added harmony notes to compete with, or even worse, drown out that melody. So it's really important that we play these extra notes much softer 
than the melody notes so that the melody can still shine. So the best way to think about it is on the beat is our melody. We know that from the A section, every beat on the beat is a melody note. So we play those louder. So on the beat loud, the ands in between the beats, just playing them soft. So if we apply that to measures nine and 10, the first two measures of this B section, it should sound like this. So you can hear there the melody is still prominent, that's what we're hearing, but those little filler notes on the ands in between are just there to start adding some depth. Okay, so we've just played measures 9 and 10, you just heard them there, so let's have a look at how we're doing it. So really, the left hand isn't doing anything different compared to the A section, um, these added notes that we're adding in on the off beats are just part of the chord, so really it's just the right hand doing a little bit more work now as we build the depth here. So measure nine is the same as measure one in that we're holding this D minor at 11 chord. So fifth fret bar, G string open, pinky on there at the seventh fret on the A. So full chord here on beat one, but now on the and after beat one, we're just gonna pick this C string at the fifth with the index finger. And I probably would thinking about it, I didn't mention this, but in this B section now, we probably want to be going to a kind of standard P, I, M, A picking style. If you're not familiar with that, it just means that P, which is the thumb, takes the G string. I, which is the index finger, takes the C string. M, the middle finger, takes the E string. And then A, the ring finger, takes the A string. Um, so basically a finger per string with the thumb there on the G. So if we use that sort of picking pattern throughout, that'll be quite easy to get this section right, okay? So beat one, full chord. Then the and after beat one, quiet pick of that C at the fifth. Then the A string fifth melody notes of beat two. Pinky comes off, play that loud. Then we're gonna play the E string at the fifth. Nice and quiet, because that one's filler. Then G string sixth. This is just like measure one, nice and loud, that's melody. Then we're gonna play the C string at the fifth, nice and quiet. And then A string at the fifth, a bit louder. Okay, so through this section, until we get to the last measure of this piece, actually, those harmony notes are always gonna be C string, E string, back to C string. So that's a good way to remember those and how they work through these measures. It's always the and after beat one, C string, the and after beat two, the E string, the end have to be three, back to the C string. So that'll help you just get this right as we go through. So into measure 10, again, we're going into this C add nine chord. So just like measure two really, but again, with these added harmony notes. So full chord on beat one, then the and after beat one, C string, nice and quiet. First finger comes on, takes the A string at the third for beat two. Then we hit the E string nice and quiet. Then we go to the A string second. So first finger comes down, pick that note on beat three. Then the and after beat three, back to the C string nice and quiet. And then for the last melody note, back up to the third fret. So first finger comes up, pick that on, the, on beat four. Okay, so those two measures once again, So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Three and four and. So measures 11 and 12 now should sound like this. So again, just like measures three and four, but with added harmony notes. So we're starting on this version of a B diminished, but with the A string at the third fret with the pinky. So full chord hit, then C string, nice and quiet, down to the A string second, bit louder, then E string first, nice and quiet, then A string first. So the first finger does that half bar across, third finger comes off, 
pick that loud on beat three. And then C string, little filler note, nice and quiet on the and after beat three. And then beat four, back up to A string second. So once again, that measure. And then into the C major seven chord. So like in the A section, these two fingers come off, leave that third finger on, full chord hit on beat one. Then the and after beat one, C string open. Then on beat two, A string open, nice and loud. And after beat two, E string open nice and quiet and then G string at the first on beat three melody so louder then open C little filler note on the and after beat three like before we'll take this off as we play the A string open on beat four okay so again there that measure and then with measure 11 So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Three and four and. So on to measures 13 and 14, they'll sound like this. So measure 13 is just identical to measure 9, so we won't look at that one again. And then measure 14 is based on this E diminished chord, so just like the A section, it's very similar to an earlier measure where we played the B diminished chord. So for measure 14, we're going to be at the 6th fret with the pinky on the A string at the 8th, and then 1st and 2nd fingers in that position there. Full chord on beat 1, then pick out that C string a little bit quieter on the and after beat 1. Take the pinky down to, well, use the third finger for the A string seventh pinky comes off on beat two. Then the and after beat two, hit that E string nice and quiet. Then on beat three, dropping this down to the sixth fret. So the first finger does that little half bar, third finger comes off. Pick that sixth fret A string nice and loud on beat three. C string filler, nice and quiet. Then back up to the A string seventh on beat four. So there's two measures once again. Brill. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Three and four and... So on to measures 15 and 16 now, they should sound like this. Okay, so measure 15 is this D minor at 11 chord with the fifth fret bar across the top three strings, G string open, pinky on the A string 10th. Full chord on beat one, then C string, filler, on the and after beat one, beat two, this comes down to the eighth fret, nice and loud on beat two, that's melody, E string filler, the and after beat two, then beat three, taking the third finger to the A string seventh, pinky comes off, then we play the C string as the filler note, then back up to the A string eighth with the pinky on beat four for that final melody note. Then into measure 16, turning this into that G13 chord, so the pinky came down a fret, first finger took the C string fifth, third finger came on to the E string seventh, full chord on beat one, then C string filler on the and after beat one, pinky comes off, second finger goes on to the A string fifth for beat two, 
Now we play the G string open here as the fill the note after beat two. So a little gentle tap with the thumb on that open G. And then on beat three, E string eighth, so the pinky took that. Then C string as the fill the note. Then down to the E string seventh as the final melody note, so pinky comes off. We pick that on beat four. So there's two measures once again. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Three and four and... So on to the C section now. So although in this section we are going to be playing that same melody line once again, this is based on the same chords that we've been playing in the A and B sections, things are going to be a little bit different in this C melody section now. So for one, obviously we're building that harmony into the 16th note arpeggios, but also we're losing that full chord hit on beat one. This is all just single note picks. So rhythmically it's dead easy because it's just constant 16th notes. Um, so it's a little bit more challenging for the right hand, but the left hand isn't really doing a great deal different, okay? So a little bit like in the previous section where we started adding and building this harmony, we still wanna make sure that the melody notes on the beat are still coming through loud and clear. So all these little extra arpeggio notes are gonna be played a lot softer, just like the filler notes in the previous section. There's just a few more of them now in this section, so we need to make sure we're controlling our fingers as we're picking these. So for example, the first two measures of this section, um, I'll play them for you. And again, hopefully you'll be able to hear just the melody coming through with all those little harmony notes, um, just quieter in the background. Okay, so just be mindful of that as you're practicing this piece, keeping that melody coming through loud and clear. Okay, so measure 17 and 18, I've just played, so you've just heard those, so let's have a look at what we're doing there. So measure 17, again, it's this first chord, same as the A section, same as the B section, this D minor, add 11 chords, so we've seen how we're doing that. But now beat one, we're not doing a full chord strum, we're just picking the A string at the seventh. Nice and loud, because that's melody. And then these three filler notes are the same all the way through this measure, we're just playing the E string at the fifth, C string at the fifth, back to the E string at the fifth. So that E, C, E, little filler section will be the same after every melody note. So beat one, and then beat two, this comes down to the fifth fret, so pinky comes off, but then those same filler notes, E, C, E, then the G, uh, G string sixth with the second finger on beat three. Same filler notes. Okay, then back to the A string fifth on beat four. Again, followed by E, C, E. So those filler notes, quite easy. We're just doing that same sequence um, all the way through that measure. Okay, so then into measure 18, we're turning this into the C add nine chord, but because we're not doing the full chord hit, we don't actually need to hold this full shape because it's all single note picks. We can just achieve those notes of the chord using open strings here, so it's a bit easier. So as we finish off that measure 17, I would be kind of leaning your hand down a bit, bring your fingers down and squash them so that this pinky is kind of like quite close to that bar. So as soon as you've finished playing measure 17, those last four notes of measure 17, if we're bringing the pinky down, we can replace it quickly from the bar, get the pinky on, and then play that note nice and quick. It'll just make that transition a bit smoother and keep everything ringing and flowing, um, and you won't even notice that you've kind of made a chord change there. It'll just flow nicely from one measure 
into the other. So if I play that measure 17 just to that first note of measure 18, we'll have... So you can see that pinky's ready to go on and just keep that seamless transition going there. So once we've played beat one, again, melodies are all on the beats. So beat one is that A string at the fifth. The three filler notes now that follow each beat in this measure are open G, open E, open G again. So just G, E, G. Those are our three filler notes after each melody note in this measure. So the first one is A string fifth, And then down to the A string third, breathe the third finger for that, followed by the same three harmony notes. Then down to the A string second, breathe the second finger, same three filler notes. And then back up to the A string third, but use the pinky for this one because that will help in the next measure when we play this B diminished chord. So make sure at the end of measure 18, this B4, that A string at the third, whichever way you do your fingers before it, make sure that pinky is on there on this B4. So that's B4, followed again by the same three G, E, G harmony notes. Okay, so that measure 18 once again, So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Three E and uh, four E and uh So measures 19 and 20 should sound like this. So measure 19 is based on this B diminished chord and we ended measure 18 with our pinky on the A string at the third and that is the first note of this measure 19 so we'll pick that on beat one but we'll not put the full chord on we'll just add the notes as we need them so that the open strings from the previous measure can just carry on ringing as we build this chord up so after we've played the A string third on beat one we want the E string at the first fret so we'll just put that first finger on there just as ready to play it. Remember that's filling out so that's a little bit quieter. Then the next note we want is the C string at the second so we'll put that on now with the second finger and pick that and then we go back to the E string which we're holding now already at the first fret. And again those are our three filler notes after every beat um, same as measure 17 we're playing E string, C string, E string of that chord after each beat. So the first beat, and then beat two, we're bringing the A string down to the second fret so that the pinky comes off, third finger takes that, that's beat two, but then those same three filler notes, E, C, E. Then we're going down to the first fret on the A string, so the first finger will flatten down across like we saw in the previous two sections, third finger comes off, pick that A string at the first on beat three, same three filler notes, then back to A string second, third finger takes it, beat four, same three filler notes. So that measure 19, So then on to measure 20, we're turning this into a C major 7 chord. So the third finger will stay on there, on the A string at the second fret. These two fingers will come off. And then on beat 1, we're just hitting that A string at the second. Single note pick, but that's melody, so nice and loud. The next three filler notes, a bit like the previous measure, is just the E string open, C string open, E string open. So this is the E and A uh, after the beat. So that's the same all the way through. So all the filler notes... E, C, E. So beat one. 
And then on beat two, our melody is the A string open. So this finger comes off, pick the A string open nice and loud, then the same three filler notes, E, C, E. Then on beat three, G string at the first with the first finger, pick that with the thumb nice and loud, same three filler notes again. Okay, and then we've got this nice little run leading back into this D minor at 11 chord for the start of measure 21, where we just run up the first string, which will then lead into that chord once again. So to make this nice and smooth, because when we're playing the C section at the desired tempo, it's not super quick, but it's got a bit of a pace going. So to get these single note picks on the A string nice and smooth, I would alternate your picking fingers on the right hand. And you could just do alternate index middle. I tend to go through the fingers and start with the ring finger on the open A. Then when we go to the second fret, use the middle finger. Then at the third fret, use the index finger. Then go back to the middle finger for the fifth fret, so that my ring finger's ready to start the next measure on measure 21. So ring, middle, index, middle, back to ring. Okay. So these four measures, um, in terms of kind of performance techniques like dynamics and rubato. I'll tell you what I like to do here, just my personal preference. Whenever I talk about these performance techniques of rubato and dynamics and things like that, I always make the point that I think it's really important that you as the player decide how you want to express this piece as you're playing it. So I'll show you what I do here in terms of these dynamics and rubato, but I really think it's important that you kind of do what you feel is right, whatever you want to express as you're playing this piece. Um, and if you like what I do, feel free to just copy me and do what I do. But if you think something else works better in terms of building the volume and the sort of tempo variations, you know, you just do whatever feels right to you is the point I'm making there. So what I like to do for these four measures is kind of treat each one separate and have the same kind of feel going through each measure. So each measure, so measure 17, if we start with that one, as I get to the middle of measure 17, I'll probably increase the volume a little bit. This is the dynamics changing the volume through the measure, make it a bit louder as we get into the middle. And then towards the end of the measure, just quieten things down again, maybe slow things down a touch as well before doing that same thing into the next measure. So each measure we get this kind of mini crescendo, then back down, and then the next measure, same again. Just get this kind of like kind of rising and falling waves kind of feel through these four measures, almost like breathing in and out as we play them. So if I play these four measures the way I would kind of perform them, so you can hear what I mean, this is the sort of thing I'm talking about. Okay, so that's how I play it. You might like that, you might not. As I say, have a little play around with it. And just, as I say, music is all about just expressing yourself. So whatever you feel, whatever you want to do, there's no right or wrong, really. Okay, so let's have a go at playing those last two measures we looked at, measures 19 and 20. We'll play those through together now. Three, E, and a. Uh, four, E, and a. Uh. So measures 21 and 22 should sound like this. Okay, so 21 is just the same as measure 17, so we won't look at that one again. But at the end of that measure 21, we're gonna be holding this fifth fret bar. Um, so when we go into measure 22, what we're gonna do is play the A string at the eighth. But I wouldn't worry about holding this full like E diminished chord at the start of measure 22. I just think about building that chord up note by note as we need it. So at the end of measure 21, the last four notes we've played are 
I would add the pinky on to the eighth fret to play the first note of measure 22 as I take that bar off. So play the eighth fret on the A string and then be bringing the first finger over to the E string at the sixth fret, ready to play that just after we've played B1. Okay, so we play that slowly. So you can see it's kind of building up note by note as we need it. Then the next note we'll need is the C string at the seventh, so I wouldn't put that on until we need it just now. So second finger comes over and takes that. And then we play the next filler note, which is back to the E string at the sixth, which we're holding now as part of our chord. So those last four notes of measure 21 and the first four notes of measure 22, once again, really slowly, so you can see how I'm kind of building the chord up note by note. And that will just help smooth the transition out and make it kind of seamless between those two measures. So once we've played that first beat of measure 22, we're then going to drop the melody down to the A string at the 7th. So the third finger will take that A string 7th, pinky will come off, pick that on beat 2. But then these same three filler notes of E string, C string, E string. Then we're going to go to the A string at the 6th fret, so the first finger will do that little flattened bar. This comes off, pick that A string at the 6th, followed by the same three harmony notes there. And then back to the A string 7th with the 3rd finger for beat 4, then E, C, E once again. So just that measure 22 in isolation. And then with measure 21. Brill. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. 3 E and a 4 E and a. So measures 23 and 24 should sound like this. Okay, so if we look at where we were at the end of measure 22, we were holding this E diminished chord. So when we get into measure 23, we'll not go straight into the full D minor at 11 chord, we'll just build it up note by note. So as I play the first note of measure 23, this A string at the 10th, only at that point there, as I'm playing that note, will I take this off and get the first finger ready to bar the fifth fret. So as I play that note, this will be coming off. The third, sorry, the first finger will bar across the fifth with the G string open, ready to play E string fifth, just after that A string 10th. And then we'll play the C string 5th, followed by the E string 5th again, just those standard three filler notes of E string, C string, E string. So if I play those last four notes of measure 22 and the first four notes of measure 23 quite slowly, so you can see how the fingers kind of build up the chord, um, I'll play that now, so we would have... Yeah, that's right. Okay, once more. Brilliant. So then we're going to move the melody down to the 8th fret for beat 2 of this measure 23. So the 4th finger will come down and take that A string at the 8th, followed by the same three harmony notes of E, C, E. Then down to the 7th fret on the A string, 3rd finger will take that, pinky comes off. E, C, E, and then back up to the 8th fret with the pinky for beat 4, followed by again E, C, E. So from that point there, we're now going to go to the A string at the 7th. Keep this on for now. We could go to the 3rd finger 
for that or just bring the fourth finger down i think on the chord boxes we show this as the third finger but when i play this i tend to just use either of these fingers sometimes i'll use a third sometimes i'll just bring the pinky down to that fret it doesn't really matter which finger you use there for this a string at the seventh just whichever you feel more comfortable with okay but i'll go with what the chord box says we'll go with the third finger on that a string seventh so we'll pick that on beat one of measure 24 and then what we'll do is we'll play the G string open. As we do that, I'd probably kind of... No, I probably wouldn't even lift that first finger up. So although it, the first finger was barring across the fifth, as we get into measure 24, you could probably take the pressure off most of that bar, but just keep the end of the finger fretting the C string at the fifth. But if the pressure comes off the E and the A, that's fine because we only need the C string at the fifth now. So once we've played beat one, A string seventh, we're then gonna play open G, followed by C string fifth, followed by open G again. So those are our three little filler notes now, G, C, G. So beat one there is, then we're gonna bring the A string down to the fifth fret, so the second finger, we'll take the fifth fret, third finger will come off, so we're now holding this shape, then we'll play A string fifth, followed by those same three filler notes again. G, C, G. But now we want to get down to a G, G7 suspended four chord down in first position. So this is quite a quick transition here. We want to kind of throw the hand down quickly to land the pinky on the A string third fret. Don't worry about the rest of that G7 suspended chord. Again, like before, we'll build that up note by note as we need it but when we're getting into beat three here of this measure 24 we just want to worry about getting this pinky onto the a string third just like that nice and quick so from here we're just going to throw the hand down with accuracy though so the pinky lands on that third fret so if i just show you the first half of that measure into that pinky landing on the third fret we would have So it's quite quick so we're not losing that flow that rhythm it's all continuous it's all smooth okay so quite a quick hand movement down to there and then once we're in that position it's easy then just to build up this g7 suspended four chord so once we've played that a string at the third on beat three we'll add the first finger onto the e string first fret just as we're ready to pick it then we'll do the same with the C string at the second fret, just in time to pick it, put that second finger on, then we can play that E string once again to complete that little harmony section there. So that beat three, and then beat four, we're gonna bring this down to the second fret, so the third finger, we'll take the A string second, the pinky will come off, play that on beat four, then the same E, C, E, filler notes in between there. So that measure, measure 24 altogether would be nice. So we'll go into this final measure now because we've only got one more to do. We're going to finish off with measure 25. So we'll look at this one as well. So from our G7 chord that we're holding now, we're going to take the first and second fingers off to make it into a C major 7 chord. Leave that third finger on the A string at the second fret, and then just play that full chord, strum it through or pick the notes, however you want to do it. And then we'll finish off with these four harmonics just to, just to complete the piece quite nicely. So I'm going to assume knowledge here of harmonics and how they work and the technique. I won't go into that now. There'll be a whole lesson on Rock Class 101 about how to do harmonics, but I'll just show you kind of where they are and where we do them. So the first one we're going to do um, on the and after beat one is going to be at the 14th fret because we're holding the second fret there on the A string. So A string at the 14th, play that harmonic there. Then the G string at the 12th and then the E string at the 12th and then finish off with the C string at the 12th on beat three and just let that ring out for the rest of that measure. So just that measure 25. Try that again. Nice. So measures 23, 24 and 25, we would have... OK, 
Okay, so in terms of these performance techniques like dynamics and rubato that are discussed at the end of the first four measures of this section, I would do something different in these four measures, but again, like I said, you do whatever you feel is right. But when I play this for these final four measures into the fifth measure, I don't do that kind of up and down kind of wave kind of feel. I'll kind of build now through these next three measures. So measures 21, 22, and 23, I'll kind of build the volume, big crescendo as we get up to these. And then measure 24, bring things right back down, um, slow them down, bring the volume down, and just kind of slow the whole piece down through measure 25. Um, just to finish it off quite nicely. So if I play these final five measures how I would play them, they would sound like this. Okay, so let's have a go at playing those three measures through together now. Three E and a uh, four E and a. Uh. Hi guys, so this week's ukulele lesson was a ton of fun, and if you're like me, I'm 35. This song brings back some amazingly nostalgic memories, because I used to play this game as a kid, and I remember walking into the cave and seeing the fairy floating over the water and giving you more hearts, and oh, it just brings back some sweet childhood memories. So I did want to give you a friendly reminder before we wrap up that if you wanted to get the tabs to print off and keep for your records, that was available at this link right here, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for Great Fairy Fountain. Now also on that page was the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. So you can literally hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.